The corals are the they're the trees of the forest. If you don't have trees, you don't have a forest. If you don't have corals building a reef, you're not going to have habitat. The reefs of the Florida Keys are not going to be able to keep up with rapid sea level rise. It's a stressful time on them. So my obsession for the last 10 years is, you know, how can we grow a lot of coral in a short period of time? And then how can we train, you know, an army of people doing this? in Florida, throughout the Caribbean, throughout the world. And what we do, our first collection of any genetic strain, it goes in the nursery and stays in the nursery. You could pick the perfect coral to work with, it would be staghorn or elkhorn coral, because they grow really fast. You can cut them into, you know, pinky size little branches and hang them on the tree. They're easy to replant on the reef, it just works. You know, those two corals are in more trouble than any other corals in the Caribbean. They have the most potential to, to have a recovery in our lifetime. We try replanting a reef with what we think are maybe heat-resistant corals or disease-resistant corals. Heat stress is primarily the thing that gets them. I mean, there's a lot of different people doing re different research as far as why a coral is resistant to heat. I've been at this for eight or nine years now. We're starting to generate some evidence that some corals have the ability to fight back. Looking for colonies that showed signs of bleaching, and we're driving numbered stakes alongside them, and then we'll take little clippings of tissue and analyze those. So you purposely took bleached pieces so that yeah. we can compare the lipids? Right. Mm -hmm. cool. We did some laboratory experiments where we try to induce bleaching in corals. I feel like this would be a good piece to use because yep. all the tissue is really healthy. Yep. Where we increase the temperature of the water up to 30, 31 degrees, and we held those conditions for two months, which is like the maximum duration in nature and would have normally resulted in high death of corals, but it didn't. When they get stressed out, we're finding that corals can actually feed on plankton from the water column, and they're using that food to store energy or fat reserves. We're finding they completely can make up for what they've lost, at least temporarily. So a good analogy is a, a backup generator that they can turn on when they've lost their primary source. The important part of the field right now is understanding, are there species that are going to be able to bounce back from that stress? So the future of uh, reefs, uh, it's really an open question right now. They've been around for 200 million years, and they've survived at least eight glacial, interglacial cycles and some other huge extinction events. What's unique is that the climate change event that precipitated those happened as much as 10 or 100 times more slowly than we think is going on now. People ask me a lot, why am I doing this? And I just, I, I feel like, we can buy a lot of time by intervening now, but if we don't do something now when we have the opportunity, then we'll, we won't have the opportunity in 20 or 30 years. We won't be able to start doing a lot of this because we're, we'll have lost too much.